The Cure is one of the most iconic alternative rock bands of the 20th century, and today we will be talking about just one of their many incredible songs. Hello, hello, welcome to Biased, the video series where I talk about things that I enjoy for your enjoyment. This is your host, your favorite man-child, Super Jesus Jackson. In Your House, released on April 22nd, 1980, is the fourth track off of The Cure's second album, 17 Seconds. It was not a single, but I mean, it should have been. It is a song that is immensely good, and I don't really hear a lot of people talk about it. I mean, it is on the first half of the album, so it tells you something. The band somewhat had, you know, hope in it. As you all may know, The Cure started out as a pop punk band, and as they went on, they developed into a more ambient gothic sound, uh, most notably with Disintegration. This album is still very popish, but The Cure are definitely going into more gothic, ambient, and dark undertones with their music. In Your House is gothic-esque, it's alternative, it is very ambient, and it caught my attention the very first time I heard it. If you guys are enjoying this content, please make sure to hit the notification bell. It really means a lot, and you can get notified whenever I upload. So right off the bat, I love how the song begins with a fade-in, which is very, very interesting. It's the first thing that caught my attention with this song, because, you know, most songs, you know, they end with a fade-out. It's reverberated, chorusy guitar tone, you know, similar to Nirvana's Come As You Are. Really, really was mesmerizing to hear. And just the notes that are playing are just super melancholic. But let me tell you, the moment that the bass comes in, the groove is finally complete and all is well. One of the biggest strengths of this song is its simplicity. Uh, I mean, it does change it up a few times here and there, uh, which we will get to in a minute. Lyrics-wise, The Cure's frontman, Robert Smith, I think is talking about a situation where the protagonist finds himself in an unpleasant situation, in a unsettling, perhaps uncomfortable situation, but he continues to be there for some reason. Maybe he finds comfort and security, and the whole house thing could be a metaphor for obviously not something actually, you know, like an actual house, but more uh, the vicinity of someone, of a person, right? Maybe this is a relationship. He also talks about pretending. Uh, Pretending could be more, you know, pretending that you are okay in this situation, pretending that you are okay with being with this person, with being in this relationship. It's just a justification for his place. The protagonist admits that in this situation, he is drowning, uh, which could be a metaphor, you know, because he wants to swim. So obviously swimming would be the metaphor for the relationship working, him being actually stable and happy in this relationship. And the whole drowning thing is, you know, the struggle, the realization that, uh, you know, this person is not treating me right or whatever it is. You know, this is a very universal thing. You know, we've all been in a situation where we want to swim, you know, and we're pretending to swim, but we know that no matter what we do, the tide is too strong, you know, the water's too deep, uh, we're gonna drown. The song changes two times, uh, I mean, really three times, but we'll talk about the third time, fuck it. The song changes up two times, uh, musically, that is, um, it, well, it actually does change three times, but we'll talk about the third time eventually. But the two times that it does change, though, the band uses these musical sections to extend the narrative of the song's lyrics, to extend the narrative of the protagonist's desire for the relationship to work. We have to think about this for a second, right? Because time is something that is out of our control. It is something that is just a fact. You know, all human beings have to deal with time. You know, we make do with it. Time in this song represents 
the relationship and the reality of the relationship, which is the fact that it's not working, that it's causing the protagonist to drown. That is the fact of the matter, right? But then the protagonist wants to contradict that. And he says, well, I'm going to change the time. You know, and then he says the hours go so slow. So he bends time. He does the impossible. And the impossible is basically the desire for this relationship to work. You know, like this fantasy land. And that is what this musical section also represents. The second time it changes, it does the same thing, lyrically and musically. So that is for sure the protagonist admitting that there is no substance in this relationship. You know, the whole silence thing, no sound, is a metaphor to saying there's nothing here. You know, it's empty. This relationship is, is just weak. It's unsettling discomfort, but yet the protagonist is still here. He comes back time and time again, and this is where the musical section then comes back, the one that we heard the first time. This section is the most beautiful section of the song, and I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? Because it is a metaphor to the relationship that he so wants to work, working. Last but not least, the song ends with the music and the lyrics finally coinciding together instead of contradicting each other. It has the protagonist admitting, you know, I'm pretending to swim, but I'm drowning. The music changes after that, and this is the third time uh, that the music does change. The guitar has this descending melodic line that sounds really melancholic, and there's these ambient swooshes that are going back and forth, almost like you're, you know, witnessing something being flushed out of existence, you know, like a, like a toilet flushing, the water and stuff. If drowning had a sound, it would sound like this. There we have it, guys. This song is just fantastic. It is so simple, yet so effective and beautiful. Let me know if you guys agree with my take or if you disagree in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. This has been your host, once again, your favorite man-child, Super Jesus Jackson, and yet another episode of Biased. Please make sure to follow my social medias and my original music. The links are in the description below. Please make sure to check out my previous biased video, the one where we talk about Ariana Grande's Positions song, and also my new cover for Radiohead's Scatterbrain, which I will do an analysis of in the coming future. Please make sure to give this video a like, a comment, share with your friends, do whatever you can, but most importantly, I appreciate your viewership. That's it for me. Until next time, guys, I love you. That's it.